When one mentions the surrealism genre, the mind usually recalls images of fantastical and oftentimes nightmarish subjects, mishmashed into something that doesn't make sense at all. Like this. Or like this. And like this. But no surreal painting is as well known as this. The Persistence of Memory, done by the master of surreal art, Salvador Dali. Surrealist cinema originated in Paris in the 1920s with Dali being one of the key artists in the movement. The surrealist films revolutionized cinema by throwing out the ingredient of a traditional linear narrative in a film. They often contain shocking imagery that is designed to surprise the audience. The eccentricities of Dali was not contained only to oil on canvas or filmmaking. Dali himself was a bizarre character. He believed he was the reincarnation of his dead brother. He hosted weekly orgies, and to spark some imagination, he would hold a key in his hands, and as he drifted off to sleep, the key would drop and hit a plate that he placed on the floor. Doing this results in a state known as hypnagogia, where you're awake, but the mind is beginning to dream. In the late 1920s, Dali discovered Sigmund Freud in his writings on the subconscious mind. And the goal of psychoanalysis is to investigate and unearth repressed fears and emotions by techniques like dream interpretation, which is believed to be a gateway to the subconscious. And this is what links Dali and Freud together, the implementation of dreams in their work. In this video, we will be analyzing Dali's and Louis Bunel's film On Chien Andalo, or An Andalusian Dog made in 1929, where both Dali and Bunel came together and discussed their dreams and put them into a film. We'll be doing an analysis through a Freudian psychoanalyst lens. Keep in mind, surreal films are not to be analyzed to find a cohesive narrative, but instead we will be keeping an eye out for recurring symbols and their psychological meanings. The first symbol I noticed was hands. The recurring images of hands in On Chien Andalo is thought to be the subconscious symbol of fetish. The function of fetish comes from the fear of sexual castration. When we see the hands being wounded or decapitated, this is the manifestation of the unconscious fear of castration or the disembodied phallus. This point is further driven by the fact that all hands are shown to be injured are male hands. The box. The box is a recurring motif in the film. It appears in the beginning as something that looks like a package to be delivered, and again in the middle of the film, and then again in the end of the film. Boxes, particularly those that lock up, are symbols of secrets that need to be kept or hidden desires or fears that are repressed. With each opening of the box, there are different objects. However, there is one instance where a decapitated hand is seen inside which ties into the analysis earlier about the fear of castration. The ants. The ants crawling out of the man's hand can be interpreted as a symbol for the fear of decay, perhaps the fear of age interfering with sexual potency or sex drive, which may have been a concern for Dali or Bunel, as he was around his mid-twenties and may have had anxieties about growing older, as many of us do during that stage. The moth. The moth in the film is associated with the symbol of death. Dali and Bunel make it quite obvious as they zoom in on this moth to what appears to be a skull on its thorax. The skull further emphasizing this point. The death of the father figure. Another symbolic event that happened in the film was the death of the father figure, where the father figure took the shape of the man himself. This may be the manifestation of anxieties resulting from a strict father figure. The father figure being the same person as the child may be the results of fears of turning into the father. The killing of the father figure may be the final resolute step into full independence from his tyranny, or at least the desire to. And those are my psychoanalytic interpretations of the symbols in On Chien Andalo Please keep in mind that I'm not a professional, and this is all just speculation. It's even harder to analyze as neither Dali nor Bunel are alive to corroborate my theories.